Hello and welcome to our network segmentation course. I'm Professor Wool. Today's lesson we'll discuss uh, how to build firewall policies for east-west traffic. So if you recall our last segment, we talked about a situation where you have a data center and you've decided to segment it uh, by placing a firewall inside of it uh, to allow all the traffic that is going through that firewall and nothing else. And the challenge that we're faced with is that we don't really know uh, what the traffic is, uh, what the legitimate traffic going through that firewall should be, because there was no firewall there before, it was just a switch, and uh, we don't have good records indicating what needs to communicate with what. Um, so how do we write the policy? What we're going to do now is really uh, suggest a methodology that you could deploy in multiple ways um, to have some structure around how to build such a policy. Uh, so, the starting point is you actually place a firewall in the middle of your network, in a place where it sees all the traffic, and you configure it uh, with a very silly rule that uh, we all know is bad, which is you write a rule from any to any, with any service, allow. This is, of course, a completely insecure rule. Uh, so you ask, why bother writing such a rule? Well, the trick is that uh, a firewall rule also has the ability to log traffic that it matches. And you can, the important thing is to place in the log column of that any, any, any allow rule, to place a log statement of yes, indicating that you want a record of every connection hitting this uh, very broad rule, and of course you place the rule, it's the only rule, but it's at the bottom of the, f of the rules. We're going to be adding additional rules above it as we go on. By doing this, you're not breaking any connections that you need to allow, because this is a rule that allows everything, so you can place it in a production network quite safely, and it will not uh, stop connectivity that you need. So what you do is you place the firewall and configure it with this very broad rule with logging turned on, and you let it run for a while, a couple of days, a week, as long as it takes to generate meaningful statistics. And then you look, that's our phase one. And now in the next phase is what you do is you look at the logs and look at the traffic that's being matched by this, that, this rule. You will see traffic legitimate traffic going through that firewall. And you can start with the busiest uh, talkers, or the busiest servers, or the busiest clients, um, and identify them. Once you've identified, assuming that you identified that there is some connectivity between these two endpoints, so you can write a specific rule saying from 10.0.0.1 .0 .0 to uh, 192.168.0.3 with uh, service HTTP allow. Okay, so you've identified specific traffic that is legitimate. You can write a special rule just for that traffic. Now any traffic that is, char is characterized by this rule that I just wrote will no longer hit the default allow rule at the end because it will be caught by the rule above it. So basically you're reducing the amount of log logs that are generated by the last rule. You know, the last rule will hit less and less traffic. And as you go through this process and you add, you add more and more specific rules above the any to any to any rule, you're reducing the amount of logs that this very last rule is generating. Now, an option for you to consider is using subnet-based rules. So perhaps you saw traffic from uh, one particular IP address to another particular IP address, and you can write a rule just for that traffic, but perhaps you know that, let's say, that server has uh, siblings uh, in similar IP addresses, so instead of writing such a very narrow rule, you could extend it slightly and future-proof it, so you could write something like from 10.0.0.0 slash 24 from the whole subnet to that same IP address 
where the service HTTP. So you can extend a little bit. You can generalize the examples that you saw in the log to slightly larger subnets. Uh, that will future-proof your rules uh, and allow a slightly more traffic than you've specifically observed because you know that there are other pieces that might come into play. So you keep on doing this and grow, grow the policy from the bottom up while leaving the very last rule still being the any, any, any allow rule. And you repeat this periodically for as long as you need until the, the stopping condition is when that very last rule is not hitting any traffic. So it's not allowing anything because all the traffic that's going through the firewall is being allowed by one of the specific rules that you added above. When that happy day arrives, then you can replace the, uh, the log statement and the allow action and replace it by deny. And now you have a firewall that's actually protecting you because all the specific traffic is allowed by the explicit rules. And the final rule is deny, just like we always want to see in a good configured firewall. Last rule is by default a deny. And now you're really protected. So this is a methodology, a process that you could follow completely manually. You could just look at the rules and the logs and write all of this by hand. Or you could use uh, technologies uh, that assist you in constructing this policy and give you information as you go along, basically saving you some of the labor uh, of uh, digging through the logs yourself. Uh, but fundamentally, it would be the same process, just machine-assisted and, and faster. Thank you for your attention.